Thanks, Chair. From where I sit, I will do that. From, from where I sit, Chair, I would have loved to understand most of the reasoning uh, that is shared by uh, the previous speakers. But this is where I see things. Every generation has a right to a struggle. This is a legitimate struggle. This is a good cause. Some of us did fight for this struggle. We did not win out of no choice of our own, but out of a choice of a system that saw it fit to do all other things except providing for free education. So I will never be part to anything that condemn the struggles of young people that are genuine. However, the struggles of young people that are genuine, which as a parent, I've got two boys at varsity. I have a responsibility as a parent to advise my kids who are also student leaders on the best way to find solutions. And I think it is good that the Parents Dialogue Collective is on board and many other stakeholders. It cannot be true that the government did not have ample time to think about solutions. What is happening here is that the government was caught off guard. We have six resolutions from six different conferences of a governing party. It must tell you something. I represent a political party and we stand firm. We fight for free higher education to junior degree or what you called uh, until first degree. And I sit here representing the EFF and I am not gonna be overwhelmed by your words. We stand for that and that's what exactly we will fight for. Now, when we ask for calm, we must also similarly handle calm with due prudence that it requires. There's been many instances, in as much as we want to picture and speak about violence, there's been many instances in most cases where we've seen that students have been ignored. A layer of these problems have created a cyst. We are now dismantling a cyst and we behave as if it did not exist. We will never be party to a problem that is first not granted its attention as a problem because whatever we do now, seek to reach an amicable decision to save 2016, we still have, um, we still have uh, 2017. These problems have visited us and they are here to stay. With or without you, young people are gonna struggle for free education. We have to make a determination fast and quick and time is running out. And I think if you look at the picture of September, October last year and the establishment of the commission, there are many things in this country that were done without a commission. This is a national crisis. This is all that our young people seek to ask out of a democratic government. And I think to criminalize their voices because we have access to podiums and institutions like this, it's wrong. They are, they are young people seriously hurt by the inequalities that we have in this country. And unfortunately, we are not paying attention and not paying attention delivers us to a miracle of problems that we find at higher education. So chair and chairs, I agree with you. Let's save lives. Let's treat our young people. Let's respond to them fairly. 
let's advise our vice chancellor to be, or our vice chancellors, to be fair. Let's get those mediators in universities. Let's ask for our students, whether they are a collective or they are led or they are a leadership or they are representatives of structures. Let's ask for them to come forward and, 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 and display a sense of knowing that this is now a duty to have a solution. But we must never, because we come from that struggle. When we fought apartheid, we were ridiculed by the Americans. They refused to sanction sanctions. They actually even had our own anti-apartheid activists overseas. We were a minority that fought apartheid, but there was a majority that required democracy. So don't turn things backward. We need to resolve this now. Whether you chase numbers or you chase figures, we have to come down to what is it that we can do. Thank you.